Hello, beautiful community. It's lovely to be with you after a two day um, health mediated uh, separation. I've missed you and cried a lot about not being together, but I got punched in the face a little bit by health and I'm delighted to be back with you today. You have um, helped me um, with lots of questions in emails and DMs that are recurrent and I'll pick a few and we'll do a little blitz around them. One I really won't take except directing you to experts, and that's the Karabakh crisis. Then a couple of questions about Kadyrov, then a question about something I say about Trump keeps coming back, and then lots of questions about this business of whether Ukraine will ever have to um, sacrifice territory in exchange for some kind of deal. So obviously we're deeply worried about people being not protected from ethnic cleansing in Karabakh and at the level of the Russian Empire and its disintegration we've got the reality that increasingly what Russia is offering boils down either to destructiveness or impotence. Below this chat I'm going to attach a link to a tweet into which I'll um, add the names of some experts I recommend following as um, worryingly the situation unfolds. We know that Kadyrov is dependent on Putin but how dependent is Putin on Kadyrov is a question that came up a few times. And let me say something here that is far from the only category of answer we need, but it's a it's one of the categories of answer that I think I can give. The quote unquote pacification of Chechnya is how Putin comes to power. In 14, the symbolism of Crimea managed to outdo, I think, perhaps the symbolism of Putin's sort of inauguration into perceived legitimacy via his um, uh, supposedly bringing Chechnya under control. So the symbolism of anything going wrong in Chechnya for Putin is huge. In some kind of Putin nightmare scenario, losing Chechnya and losing Crimea would be an unimaginable disaster. So there is enormous symbolic significance here. The costs are huge. And Putin you know, doesn't do what the Russian people tell him to do. Um, he does what he wants. He does what I think he thinks history tells him to do. Um, plus, with regime security considerations, as he understands them, tell him to do. But always the stuff that he's up to requires a retrospective acclimation from, from the Russian people. And that's something that's going to be very difficult to get in relation to things working out badly for him in Chechnya. A lot of you have been asking whether separatist attitudes could surface again if Mr. Kadyrov uh, disappears. And the answer to that question is inevitably yes. Um, if a sufficient degree of vacuum and conflict develops, absolutely these attitudes will surface and there is a risk that um, if the Kremlin uh, succeeded in orchestrating some kind of a succession for Mr. Kadyrov that they could control the early part of that process but later on lose control over that process. Just very briefly 
Vlad, you keep saying that Trump's chance of getting elected to 50-50 is something that's sort of is absolutely terrifying for people, a lot of people in this community um, who feel that that's existentially bad. And so, you know, Vlad, can you really mean it? It's 50-50. And I'm afraid the answer is that I um, I say 50-50 because of a, of a need to, 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 to stylize it and emphasize the openness of it that way and to introduce the idea that we're dealing with uncertainty as much as with sort of um, uh, a dynamic of risk management where we can estimate probabilities. So 50-50 is the best bet, but if you wanted a psychological clue, then I think the way things are going, we may even, with great uncertainty, edge toward Trump. So it could be 60-40 in, in Trump's favor the way things are going but that's not an actual probability that's a psychological clue with the reality being one of uncertainty can ukraine ex exchange be put in the position where it just has to exchange exchange territory for peace what will it do then and so on we've spoken a lot about this and you know my interpretation of the kremlin which is that the kremlin doesn't do peace um the Kremlin isn't interested in negotiating, and if it's interested in negotiating, it's interesting in, ne in negotiating today to re-escalate later. That doesn't say anything about what Ukraine should do. I'm not analyzing that. Um, but as far as the analysis of the Kremlin goes, uh, the Kremlin is not capable of a, sus of a sustained deal that guarantees not just a peace, but a but as permanent peace um, with a you know peace about the peace for Ukraine but I think one thing that's worth saying here is something political that I think is often missed because this stuff um, NATO membership in exchange for territory and all of these things that you're seeing on Twitter and in YouTube videos I think that stuff fails to grasp a very basic political reality which is and this is going to sound um, uh, provocative for you but it's about understanding politics gr grasping this the ukrainians the ukrainian government does not have a position on this issue you might say well, you've completely lost your mind they clearly state their position 74 times a day no they don't have a position on this issue. You can't have a position on this issue in their position. What they absolutely must do is state what they're stating, which is ain't no territory going to be sacrificed. But they do not have a position. They're going to develop a position on this later when circumstances arise that clarify which way the situation is working out and then they're going to respond and, and, and develop but there's no there's no sense in which they politically have a position because the political situation um, and the military situation that needs to be clarified for them to have a position has not been clarified yet so it's their job for now to say what they're saying but what their position is is going to be a product of what happens later what happens on the battlefield what western powers do what western powers say who support ukraine what happens in um, various elections in western democratic states that support ukraine and so all of that will then feed in to a position being developed. But at the moment, they, the Ukrainian uh, government is saying what it has to say, and later it'll face uh, the objective reality that will arise, that it'll try to make as favorable to Ukraine as conceivably possible. Um, we'll be connected more properly soon. Lots of love for now.